So why am I sitting here in the dark? Why am I wearing sunglasses? Well, what's up with all these lights? Okay, so here we are in the newest age of barbering and I think you're going to notice that barbering has changed quite a bit in video editing and pictures and photography is super, super important to advertise your barbering. And the sooner you get an understanding of that, the sooner you get a grasp on that, you're going to find that your advertisements become a lot more effective when you start using video and photography coupled along with your social media to increase your business. This is really going to help you. And the further you get into that, you're going to find that you're going to need some good lighting to go along with it because it's really difficult to get those camera angles correct and it's really difficult to get them perfect pictures that you want to post on Instagram to advertise how good you are. Because you can be the best barber in the world, but if you take bad pictures, nobody else is going to know it. Okay? So that's what brings me to the light. And the other advantage to the light is the fact that how many times have you seen a client walk out the door? and you realize, oh God, I made a little mistake there. I could have blended that a little better. I could have did something a little different. Do you call them back and do it? Probably not. This is the 14 inch ring light, okay? This one has like a fluorescent in here and this light does get hot. So you might want to be careful using it with like a diffuser. If you see on my box light, we'll get to this in a minute, but this little, this little drape thing over top of the light, that's a diffuser. That's going to stop this harsh light from blinding other people in your shop and stuff like that too. And it's also going to give you a softer light for the look that you're trying to create. But in this case, this, these are, these are dimmable. I can turn this down. I can turn this up and you know, it works pretty good. This was one of the first ones I started working with and the 14 inch was pretty good. I liked it a little bit, but I did run into some drawbacks. If you look at the size of my camera, it, it really doesn't fit. Um, just having a look at it in there, it, it's not going to fit with the road mic on there. So if, if filming is what you're trying to do, you're, you're probably going to run into a little bit of a problem there. However, there is a way to make it fit. It's just, it's a little bit more uncomfortable, which is why you might consider a move to the 18 inch ring light. Now this here is the 18 inch ring light. And this one has plenty of room for your camera, plenty of room for everything. It's a lot brighter than that fluorescent bulb. These can be dimmed all the way down or turned all the way back up. And this is a really, really nice light. Now, some of the drawbacks from the big ring light is the fact that it's very, very bright. And some clients who are just sitting in the shop, maybe waiting for a haircut or in an adjacent chair, they could be getting blinded by this. So, you know, it's kind of something that you want to use on one hand because it really helps with filming. It really helps with cutting. It really helps all the way around, but it is enormous and you will bump into it from time to time and it will possibly intrude on what others are doing in the shop and you might not want to do that. That might not be a good idea. So I love the 18 inch ring light, especially when I'm filming. I use it all the time. However, if you're using it with a diffuser, uh, I got like a makeshift uh, diffuser on this right here. I just put some duct tape that's white across the top. These really don't get hot. It doesn't melt or anything. I could do it throughout the whole light. But personally, I really don't care about a diffuser because I have um, something I can drape over it for that. So there's all kinds of clever ways that you can create, you know, um, a way to block some of that light from coming through and give you a different kind of shot, different colors, different filters. And I'm not really that guy to explain all of it to you. I'm just telling you how it relates to barbering and what my personal favorite thing is to barber with. Boom. We're done with this one. Next, let's talk about the box light. Okay, this is a really large light. I mean, if you could see how big this thing is, I used to actually work with this. I used to actually keep this right by my station. And um, yeah, it, it was really big, really in the way. It occupies a lot of space. However, it throws off a nice light. And if I move this diffuser, um, you can see that inside there's basically four large light bulbs that are giving off a really nice soft light to my subject and I'm, I'm able to really get a nice, you know, good view of sort of like a natural light without such a blinding ray like it comes from these other ones. But this light is really good for filming, probably something you're gonna wanna keep in like a studio or something like that. You might not wanna run around your shop with this and work with this every day because it's just too much to work with. Okay, so let's talk about some smaller options. Okay, and one of the smaller options that you see people using at shows is this one that I got on my head. 
Okay, this is a this is a Bushnell headlamp. It's really, really strong. It's really bright. And of course, in comparison to all these lights that you're looking at, it doesn't look all that strong and it doesn't look all that bright. But you gotta trust me, it definitely is. It's a nice light. And I'll put the link in the description for every single one of these things. As far as the little Bushnell headlight goes, this is great for travel, cutting in hotel rooms, maybe cutting at shows when you don't have the ability to bring one of these bigger lights and you don't have the room to put one of these bigger lights. That's really where this stuff is gonna, that's really where something like this light's gonna come into handy. However, if you're just trying to take photographs, this light is not that great for taking photographs. You're gonna find it a lot easier to use just your handheld light. And I find that I get really great photographs out of this. I can put light wherever I want and it works really well. And if you don't have the budget to buy some of these other ones, then yeah, you're definitely gonna to wanna to look into that little handheld light or at least one of them Bush, Bushnell uh, headlamps. I've used a lot of different headlamps like that and I'll tell you this one that I got here is the absolute best. It's lasted me the longest. I've had it for like two years and I've used it for other things as well. It's a fantastic light. I really enjoy using for all my photos, just a little handheld light. And I'll put the link in the description for this. It's very inexpensive. If you can't afford to get any of these other lights or if you don't wanna spend the money or whatever the reason is, this little light here can really step your game up on your Instagram photographs. You can get that light from underneath to make the fade look a little different, light from overhead. And you could just use this with your cell phone. You don't even have to have a fancy camera. So that's one of the great advantages to this. So I would tell you guys if, if budget is a problem, or even if it isn't, I mean, this is probably my most used light. Out of all these lights, even if I have the greatest light set up in the world, when it comes time to take that picture of my cut, man, I want this thing, man. I wanna put this in just the perfect spot, shut the other one off, and get myself a really nice Instagram picture. And you know, that's, that's kind of my favorite thing to do. Okay, the thing that's great about this light is it's, it's very compact. It can be moved around just about anywhere, and you can clamp it to just about anything. And I've seen to come up with, an, like I seem to keep coming up with different ways to mount this in my shop, and it just becomes better and better. You can also, there's an attachment, I don't have it here, but you can attach it to one of these if you wanted it to be on a big stand. But my opinion is like, why would you want it to be, why would you want it to be on a big stand when the whole idea is for it to be small, right? So I actually find a really interesting mounting position for this that's, that's just fantastic, is inside the blow dryer hole on your station. That's actually how I mounted at my shop. And the first time I featured this light on my Instagram, I must, have, I must have gotten about 20 messages. Hey, where's that light? Hey, what is that light? And the link is in the description for this light. This is my best light to work with when it comes to actually barbering. This light is helping me in a lot of ways. It helps me spot any imperfections, any lines, helps me do cleaner work and better quality haircuts in less time because I'm not fighting phantom shadows that are coming from everywhere in your shop. In my experience, most shops do not have the proper lighting. It's just the way it is. And you're gonna have to find a way to overcome that. All of these lights are gonna help you do that, but you need to find the one that's right for you. And for me, it's this really small one right here. I really love this thing, it's fantastic. But if you are filming, video editing, and stuff like that, you're gonna need a ring light. And that's why I have the 18 inch ring light, which is also my favorite, okay? So if I'm filming and I'm editing, I probably have that thing sitting in a ring light. And if I'm not filming, I have this thing sitting here and I use this little gooseneck LED. And the other thing about the gooseneck LED that's nice is when I plug it into my blow dryer hole, I can just set my M50 on a Gorilla Pod right next to it and it works fine for filming too. You would be surprised at how many lights you can find at Home Depot that are also great for you. I'm a big fan of some of these puff lights here that you see at the end, and they're just really, really nice lights. And if you have the space and if you own the shop and you think that you can do it, I always wanted to try putting some of them up and down the walls and just to see what kind of nice, soft, good light that gives off without being too harsh or obtrusive to other clients who might be sitting there waiting or clients who are in other barbers' chairs that don't want to be blinded. Other options you can see at Home Depot, there's all kinds of different stuff you can do. And if you look into it, spend a little time, do a little bit of research, you don't have to buy these, you can find something at Home Depot as well. However, I was just at Home Depot recently, I looked at a lot of the options and I looked at how they stack up to this. This is built for filming 
and doing photography and stuff like that, this stuff is obviously gonna work better for you if you have the cameras and stuff like that. However, if you're at Home Depot and you buy one of those other lights too, those LED lights, they're really bright. They can do a really good job too. They also can get very hot too, so make sure you know what you're doing and don't start any fires or nothing like that. And so that you have options. You know, when, when you decide to film a video, you wanna have options. You wanna have different things that you could do. And you know, all of this is really gonna contribute to that. It's really gonna help you. So, I hope this video helped answer some of your questions about lighting, lighting in the barbershop, and what lights that I use. And if it did, please let me know in the comments. Let me know what you think about it, and let me know what light is right for you. All the links for every light that I've shown in this video will be in the description. And I'll see you guys in my next video, man. I'm out of here. Peace.